Oh, Jay's just found the photo of Ben on the front riding and yesterday Richie. and Richie on the wheel looking like he's suffering. Here we go. Look at that face. I'm cruising, eh? <laughs> I'm just cruising, eh? <laughs> One of the top ten highlights of your career, Andre? It was. <laughs> <laughs> Cycling is all about creating memories. Yeah. So I did. <laughs> stage five. Uh, it should be a sprint stage, but this is Tour of Britain, so it could be a breakaway stage. But we want it to be a sprint stage for this guy. Oh yeah, last uh, day that my family are going to be here, so six, seven, and eight is going to be back to sort of normal. It's been real buzzy, the crowds are pretty insane, as usual for the Tour of Britain, but quite unusual for racing sort of recently, so it's good. It's good, life is good. Woodsy bought proper coffees to the bus as well. It's service course, baby. Service course. Go there, buy it, love it. <laughs> Any, anyone else want to do some product placement on YouTube? Uh, Dan, you got something to push? Oh, yeah, it's not. <laughs> Always be hustling. Always be hustling. <laughs> oh, imagine if Fumi was here. Oh, He'd be product placing his whole retirement plan. <laughs> anyway, let's go bike racing. Chances of a break getting away and staying away a little bit more remote on this course that featured three categorized climbs as the race passed Jodrell Bank. Israel startup nation, Rebecca Next Hash and Dakonic Quickstep controlling the pace for their sprinters as they went to the first sprint of the day at Congleton, where Jake Scott, for the fourth consecutive day, was present in the breakaway. It's pretty big, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it's National Champions League, he can refuse it. Alaphilippe's world champion, so I don't think he's allowed to use it. I don't know if there's anyone else in between. But that gives it, puts it on to Mike Shoulders, who's perhaps fourth or fifth in the competition. Which he's not happy about, because wearing a jersey is great if you're actually leading that jersey. Mike is not, not where close, nowhere near and not going to win the jersey, so... <laughs> it's just an unfamiliar item of clothing he's wearing today. Quite funny though. Stage six went well. We pulled. A few people were asking actually why we pulled to bring the break back. And the reason was to try and win the stage and move up on uh, GC with Mike and Dan. Ineos were never going to pull their break back because they wouldn't have wanted for the chance of uh, Wild Van Aert winning the stage and taking bonus seconds back from back from Ethan to well. So this is why when we moved up to work, Richie Port, and there's a lot of tactics and strategies and, and mind games that goes on in, in cycling. Like so when Richie Port moved up, when I moved up, Richie was riding. He was like, no, sorry, Alex, we don't need the help. Like, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> sort of, I was like, no, I said, wait, wait. We're not going to help you keep this break at bay. Pulled that back. Mike gave it a good go. Wasn't really sure what Movistar were doing then because strategically they could have left Mike out there to, or attacked with Mike to try and win. But they pulled Mike back in the hope that it was a sprint, which it was, which their guy just didn't feature, well, maybe it was fourth or fifth. They really could have played that differently, knowing that Mike was up there in GC and then he also would have had to pull him back for fear of losing the overall race. And the Movie Star fellas were not up there on the overall. So, uh, yeah, that didn't make much sense, but you know, sometimes cycling doesn't. And now we're doing stage seven and everyone's pretty tired. Well, they're the GC. Dan and Mike are not tired. I'm not. Dan and Mike, GC guys don't get tired. That's what happens. It's just... As you know. That's why they're so good. As, as you know. Fatigue is not a factor in GC guys. Uh, it's just a mental thing. Yeah. Now, it actually gets easier when they go uphill. Like, everyone else has to push more watts. These guys actually have to push less. Science, baby. <laughs> Science. Israel start at nation. Oh, look at the reception you have here in Hoyt, gentlemen. It's almost like they knew you were coming. So our team of Israel start at nation, they too had arrived involved in breakaway action yesterday. Nice to have him with us for one more time. Andre Grosso. Being filmed by the British Time Trial Champion, who's got his action camera going here, is of course Alex Jason. There was a big attack from a young spectator on the side of the road who briefly broke clear of the last five in the race before Pascal Encon offered him a well-deserved refreshment. 
And then business was resumed. And when Lampart went, his sprint was unanswerable. Gibson, having done too much work, perhaps on the front, found himself unable to go with the Belgian and was beaten into third place, ultimately, by Matteo Jorgensen. Yes, I, had a, I had a under jersey on today, um, first time here in this week. Completely so all credit to the UK for the nice weather and uh, for it's making okay my legs hurting a lot. That's so, it's okay. so nice. Outside of Dauphiné, one of the hardest weeks of the year. Dauphiné is it? It's a walk in the park. This here is not a walk in the park. It's Hill climbing. I know. Uh, climbing. Real climbing, like. Ah, Zack. 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 Oh, hard day in the office. Hard day in the office. But I don't know if they're delicacies to Edinburgh, but we have meat pies for recovery. Food today. One day more. Right then, 20 minutes to go, final stage of the Tour of Britain, and there is a hideous climb at 35k. We're not sure what's going to happen because it's a bit too far, like breakaway normally would have gone by that point, but it is a hideous climb. It is the hardest climb of the Tour of Britain, 3k at 10%. It's, it's, it's hard. Andre psyched. Last ever race in Britain. A momentous occasion in your career. The what? It's a momentous occasion in your career. Exactly. Yeah. I'm really uh, gonna enjoy that moment uh, to ride in this uh, English weather. Finally, we have English weather. <laughs> I don't know if you seem happier now that the weather is bad. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's normal, you know. Uh, half of the bunch is, is dead. Yeah. I'm, I'm fresh. How do you say I'm so fresh. You just got up. I, I just got really better day by day. Yeah. Uh, at the end, it's just a mental, mental thing, you know. That's all cycling. Ten percent climb is uh, a walk in the park. Actually, in Scotland, there are no parks. They are just, there's just grass. So, <laughs> plus the wind gonna be there as well. Yeah. Uh, but as I'm fresh, as like the first day. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna smash it. <laughs> gonna smash them. <laughs> some, if you do that, some people might actually be walking in the park up the climb. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna block the road because I'm gonna explode and gonna make a big crater in the road. A crater. I, to, I, I make sure that this climb is, will be never in this tour anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the last last race in Britain for this guy as well. Unless are they, are they gonna do like a. A closing out like crit in Dublin. Oh, no, we're, we're, that's our announcement, isn't it? We're going to become a ten, a ten rider. Ah, uh, yeah, CT rider in the UK. Oh, <laughs> and you won't have to abide by UCI rules, so you exactly. like, could actually have a nice TT position for the first time in your career. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, in Dan's defence, he was one of the strongest riders in the team time trial. Got a future as a time trialist. This is what we. That's what I've been building up for. This is what we've discovered. This tour of Britain is Dan should have been a time trialist all his career, and Andre should have been a domestic lead out man all of his career. Everybody has to carry his package. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but like, that's like one of those famous German proverbs. My package remember. is quite big. <laughs> <laughs> it's 85 kilos, 86. Oh, okay, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's already else. 87. Yeah. Oh, all the power is package made something else in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with this weather, this English weather, my package is gonna get smaller. <laughs> right. In Germany, it's like if you have a problem like smoking, alcohol, that means everybody has to carry his. Oh, in English, English we say baggage. Baggage. Yeah. Baggage. Well, there we go. There we go. Communication problem. 
done. So today, stage eight of the Tour of Britain, I think it's safe to say we're all gonna be carrying our packages over that climb. <sighs> Except for the GC guys, who never get tired, ever. Final 173 kilometers of the AJ Bell Tour of Britain for 2021. The finish line in Aberdeen would be a test for the leadership of Ethan Haytup on the barren slopes where huge crowds had gathered towards the top of the biggest and hardest climb of the day. One of the hardest climbs on the entire route of the Tour of Britain. Ethan Hayter sitting pretty but having to open up his sprint already. Wout van Aert then coming off the rails, finding a gap, moving in front of Hayter, coming past Andre Greipel, finishing fast, and Mark Cavendish to take the win with Ethan Hayter rolling in in the minor placings and out of the general classification lead. And that's a wrap on the Tour of Britain. I'm at Edinburgh Airport, ready to get a flight back to Stansted, see uh, family. And what's the Grand Prix with Dad? It's something we always used to do, but don't do so much anymore. It's a good day, good day. Andre got second in the sprint. I'd like to say it helped him. I did help him, but then Andre let me go. Like 2.2k to go. Looked behind me. I had a load of speed. I just had an opportunity to move up, and we were hitting a tailwind. So I was like, better to be at the front because it's hard to move up in a tailwind. And Andre doesn't like a fight, so um, I was like, let's get him to the front. So I just rocketed to the front with a load of speed because Movistar played a wrong move and went over to the left to leave a big gap on the right, which was the sort of which was sheltered. So I just used that momentum, shot to the front, and then Andre let me go. Look round. Had a quick look behind me to check he was still there. I was like, "Whoa, there's no one there." Andre hit 74k an hour in the in the sprint, so I was never staying away. Like, never staying away with 2k to go and the three second lead. But yeah, it was nice. It was nice of Andre to let me have that bash as well. It certainly wasn't planned. It wasn't intentional. And uh, yeah, and Andre got second, which he was delighted with because Wout Van Aert is is Wout Van Aert. So. This is a good addition of the Tour of Britain. It's good for us. It's a great team. It's great to be on a final race with Dan Martin and Andre. At their final outing in the UK is a big deal for Dan. Andre has two races to go, both in Germany for him. And I'm featuring one of them next week in Frankfurt. And for me, it was good. Legs were good. I was doing a big job. Came away with fifth and seventh on GC, but it wasn't through a lack of trying. And, uh, well, Van Aert won it overall, Ethan Hater showed that he's, I think as soon he's going to win everything. It was a hard race. It was a hard, hard week. It always is a hard week. In terms of TSS, I think the boys that did the Tour de France said they had a higher TSS this week than the first week of the Tour. But it's a different kind of hard. It's like you're on the pedals all day in the Tour of Britain because the roads are hard, the racing's hard. Um, whereas the, like in European races, when it's easy, it's really easy. And then when it's on, it's really on, whereas here it's just like hard all day. But it was a really good, really good team. And shout out to Cherry Pridham. This was her first race with the with the World Tour team as lead director. And she did a stunning job, I think. And the, the general consensus was that she did a great job. She made big calls like that often some of the riders didn't agree with, but all actually worked out in the end. Yeah, it's tough for a DS because if you make a call, you've got to be accountable for it. So it's easy for DSs to not make calls and just kind of tell you what the road's about to do and leave you as riders to make the decisions on the road. But Cherry made some made some calls and we responded and it was a good team. Mason did well. Actually, worked out with a day to go that I was the second youngest rider. At 32 years old, I was the second youngest rider in the squad that we took to the Tour of Britain. Which made me happy. Anyway, I'm gonna sign off there. I'm gonna go home, chill out. Frankfurt next, then mix relay at Worlds. Not doing the individual time trial, and just wasn't selected for it. It's a disappointment. And I'm a reserve for the road race, which is fine. And uh, look forward to the end of the season, because it's getting closer. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and hope you enjoyed this week and these, these vlogs. Oh, and shout out to the weather. Tour Britain weather made it like a light drizzle for maybe 30 minutes of three stages out of eight. So, yeah, up yours, Tour of Deutschland.